heads are spinning. Hello, my fellow patriots. My name is Ronald Perryman. Truth isn't truth. Welcome to another episode of Heads Are Spinning. I'm not going to lie here. I now have a little bit of a pep in my step after hearing the greatest president in the history of the world, Donald J. Trump, has decided to bless our country by running again to be our commander in chief. It's like God answered my prayers that he would give of himself to do this. I mean, what a personal sacrifice, right? He is the true definition of an American hero. Okay. I'd like to now bring on another great patriot, Gerald Holcomb. Gerald, are you as excited about this great news as I am? Oh, I may be more excited than you, if that's possible. Yeah, well, I don't think you could actually be more excited than me, but go on. Okay, well, regardless, I am so looking forward to Donald Trump returning to his rightful place, the White House. Sure, he may seem happy in Florida at that Mar-a-Lago place he has, but he belongs in our nation's capital, doing presidential stuff, you know? Uh, not wasting his time going over old, supposedly classified paperwork of his. And, and let me tell you, if he was still in charge, that little skirmish going on in Ukraine would have never happened. Even a liberal like you, Spud, would have to agree with that, right? Uh, no. If Trump was still in the White House, Putin and his weak-ass army might be in Paris right now. And with Trump's name plastered on their tanks instead of those Zs they spray-painted on them, you know. Trump is smart about one thing, and that's branding, so uh, that's what I would have expected. Anyway, I don't even want to think about where the world would be right now if Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Arizona didn't flip to blue in the 2020 election. Well, actually, Spud, they didn't flip to blue. The truth is Donald Trump won 49 states in the 2020 election. Um, I think it'd be actually... Uh, he, he did lose California by a couple thousand legal votes. Uh, and oh yeah, oh thank God most of those election deniers, those doofuses who ran for office in state elections, lost in the midterms. Um, just gotta ask you guys, what happened to that huge red wave you two were predicting? You barely held serve with the country in so-called ruins. How'd that happen? Well, the answer is obvious. Republican votes were not counted. I read that there were millions of ballots from conservatives that are still in buckets, stuffed into mini storage units around this country, and someday they will be discovered and there will have to be a do-over election. Yeah, when that happens, could you also let the Easter Bunny know in the future, maybe go with higher quality chocolate and not the cheap crap some candy companies are now using with those freaking hollow bunnies? Yeah, anyway, now let's just move on to the first topic. What is it? Spinning, spinning, heads are spinning. Yeah, I suggested this great American to be our first topic, as he has made billions of people quite happy by reinstating Donald Trump back to where he belongs, as the king of social media. Now, I myself am not a Twitter guy, but to deny Donald Trump a platform to spread his divine wisdom was a very bad decision. And we all thank God Elon Musk has come to the rescue in buying Twitter. Don't you agree, Gerald? Yo, I thank God daily that Elon Musk is trying to right the wrongs of the libs by taking over Twitter and reinstating Donald Trump as his was the best tweeter ever. Um, I have a dissenting opinion on Elon. It, it was cool he gave the Ukrainians 20,000 Starlink satellite units so they could, you know, communicate while they defend their country. But he's still an obscenely rich dude who likes to swing his dick, you know, whenever possible. When, once his businesses got so big, our government kind of had to jump in and provide some oversight. He then subtly says he's a conservative, uh, moves to Texas and tells everyone they should vote Republican. He kind of turned into a whiny little baby, if you ask me. I suppose you would swallow the blue pill, Spot, am I right? I sure wouldn't swallow the red pill. And not after Trump destroyed that damn color with his stupid hats. I've had to throw out anything resembling the color red in my closet because of him. Like my favorite Doctor Who red shirt and my lucky pair of red underwear that I always wore when I went to the casino. You know, I won a lot of money with it on. Hashtag sad. 
Well, what I really appreciate Elon doing right now is spreading the word that people need to start having more babies, a lot more babies, or soon the world as we know it will vanish someday. My wife and I wanted more, but we came to accept three children will be our small contribution. Uh, now, we both know we should have made it more aggressively so we could have had at least 10 like Elon has. What a great example he is to others around the globe. Uh, not many can afford the child support he has to pay to so many different women. The guy's kind of like a not-so-artificial insemination machine. Uh, let, let's see how often he procreates after the $44 billion he paid for Twitter goes up in smoke. He, he might be clipping coupons real soon. The, though my wife and I chose to enjoy our lives together and abstain from having children, Elon is correct. We do need more babies. Well, in some areas of the world, like in America. The right kind of babies, you know, to even out the numbers, so to speak. We can't lose our culture with too many babies that might not fit in, you know? I don't think we need to go revisit Tucker Carlson's bogus replacement theory again, okay? Well, let's just move on to the next topic. Spinning, spinning, heads are spinning. This one I came up with is I can't figure it out, so let me ask you two who clearly qualify as two right-wing dudes, why so freaked out when you come across someone Mostly gay males, as you guys don't seem as frightened of lesbians. I'm just, I'm just thinking that's because you, you assume you could flip them all if you spent, you know, any time with them. But gay men and transgender people get you all worked up. Why is that? Well, I would like to respond to that first, if you don't mind, Joe. It's fun. What you don't seem to understand is there's a natural order to the world, and that doesn't include the male species acting like females. It upsets the equilibrium of the planet. Men in fancy dresses, eyeliner and nail polish. Where do you see the end game with this apparent behavior? I think you're stereotyping here a bit. Uh, there are a ton of gay men in pro sports and a number of transgender people serving in the military. You know, and, and for, there are people who just choose to go with a, a, you know, a gender that they feel more comfortable with in life. Who cares? You, you know, also with drag queens, uh, good grooming habits are a positive thing and shouldn't make anyone feel uncomfortable. Just just because most straight men let themselves go after around 28 or so, don't hate on those who enjoy a little glamour in their appearance. I mean, both of you could use a little bit of bedazzlement in your look, if you ask me. Uh, okay, Spud, if God had wanted men to have the freedom to make themselves into women, he would not have given them genitals to procreate. You know, once you have a penis... Oh, can, can I say that word on this show? I guess I did, so I apologize. But anyway, no amount of duct tape is going to make it go away. Well, that's not necessarily accurate, Gerald. Men are flocking to Mexico. Canada and other countries to have surgery done to, to make them into, uh, I don't even know what it's called after surgery. And now when a fellow goes into a bar now to socialize, he has no idea who he's buying a drink for. It's not right. Hey, if a guy's attracted to someone in a bar and buys him a drink, well, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. I, listen, I know. I don't want to be in a men's room somewhere and look over and see someone in a formal gown with makeup on urinating next to me. That would be very traumatic. I wouldn't wish that experience on anyone. If some guy in a dress peeing next to you is the end of the world, then you need to look in the mirror at yourself, Mr. Snowflake. I would bet it would be visually disturbing to anyone gay or straight that was standing next to you at a urinal. Let's be honest here. You do give off that creepy John Wayne Gacy vibe. Now, can we just move on now and wrap this one up? Okay, fine. Let's move on. Spinning, spinning, heads are spinning. It's a shame we wasted valuable airtime on that last topic. Spud, it seems to me that you have lost your sense of manhood, like most liberals these days. I bet you only watch TV shows and movies where women are the leading characters, right? Where the gays are the heroes and the strong heterosexual male characters are made out to be monsters. It's no wonder our boys these days are growing up and choosing to be bronies 
instead of real men. Oh, you are so right, Ronald. My wife and I are both worried about our youngest, Dwight. Though he hasn't to this point showed any obvious signs of turning his back on being 100% male. He does have a teacher right now who I believe is fluid. I, I think that's what they call it. When we attended back to school night a few months ago, this teacher was wearing an earring, which we all know is an open advertisement that he is bisexual at the least. What's with you, Joha? Now, Dwight should not be subjected to that sort of gender confusion at this age. Um, I used to wear an earring, you know, many years ago. I stopped when mall kiosks, you know, everywhere started piercing the ears of everyone still breathing in this country. Then for me, it became more like wearing Crocs in public. I couldn't live with myself, so I tossed the earring. But, but it's not a blaring advertisement of one's sexuality. You got bad information, which of course you did. Well, wearing an earring these days might not signal a man is homosexual, but it sure doesn't say he's 100% committed to being a male. It still kind of leaves the closet door cracked open a bit. Absolutely. If our Dwight ever did get his ear pierced, well, I know we would refer him immediately to church elders for counseling. The Mormon church has developed a very effective technique to drain the promiscuity out of our youth. And they even work with adults, too, on select basis. And as you know, Spud, that will always be there for you as an option should you choose to join us one day. Yeah, I kind of have plans on Sundays, as I have told you on many occasions. Uh, yeah, but maybe Ronald would be interested in joining you at church sometime. Me? <laughs> oh, my wife and I are devout Christians, but we choose to worship in our own home on Sundays. It is a sacred day. Uh, yeah, especially during the NFL season, right? Anyway, okay, I am out of here. I am Spud Goodman. Be all that you can be, and I mean that. God bless and ciao. Bye bye. All right, then. I am Ronald Perryman, and my podcast, From the Mind of Ronald Perryman, is available everywhere podcasts are found. Until we meet again, goodbye. And I am Gerald Holcomb, your voice for liberty and freedom. Freedom! Please join us again for another episode of Heads Are Spinning. Goodbye. Spinning.